Hi everybody and welcome back to Lost Genre Reddit Stories. Quick PSA before we start. 1. Today's video has two stories and both of them have updates. Also, the first story does touch on the topic of domestic violence, so if that is a trigger for you, you might want to skip the first story. Now, let's get started. This post is from the subreddit Relationships and it's by user Scared of Girl. My girlfriend, me, 21 male, her, 21 female, together, one and a half years, threatened to smash my face in while holding a fireplace shovel and similar sayings during fights. She and campus counselor told me to basically toughen up. I've been with my girlfriend since we met at freshman orientation last year and instantly hit it off. For the first year, everything was awesome. We have similar views on politics, we have similar hobbies and plans for the future. This fall, we both wanted to move out of dorms and we decided to get an apartment together. Long story short, it was bad from the get-go. I had no idea she was so against me having time to myself to do things like listen to music and play video games. She thinks we always should be talking or cuddling. I don't mind a lot of these things, but maybe an hour a day, I just want to unwind and be alone. This was the first issue. The second week we got into a huge fight and she threw a coffee cup at my feet and it smashed. She apologized profusely and said she was super stressed from classes and that her politician of choice was getting more press than the one who I support, but I don't get that stressed. Next fight she said she was going to beat the crap out of me, but again she had an excuse that stress and her hours had been cut, etc. We had several of these fights and I had in my brain that I would take the winter break to think about things. I thought maybe I could work it out with her and we both got back on Martin Luther King Day. That night she got super mad over something I don't even know what it was and picked up the shovel to our fireplace and said she was going to smash my face in. Our walls are super thin and the next thing I know the campus police were at our door threatening to arrest me, but my girlfriend talked them out of it. They then filled out an incident report and we were required to meet the campus counselor, which was today. I explained to the counselor that I am literally afraid of her, she's actually much bigger than me in terms of height and weight, and she interrupted me and said I was being pathetic and I need to toughen up. The counselor then basically parroted that my weakness might be a setting off point for my girlfriend and that I need to work to change that. I said that no matter if I am weak and that bothers her, I don't deserve to be threatened with a shovel. The counselor said that my girlfriend and I need to come to an understanding of what really happened that night and there are two sides to the story. She kept just nodding and saying stuff like, that's what I think and that's what I've been telling him. We left and went in separate directions since she had class. I'm sitting in the union typing this, afraid to go home because I feel she will be empowered by this. I want to leave and feel safe again, but I just don't know how. Well, Opie, first things first. You don't go back to that apartment. You ask somebody, anybody who can help you out if you can stay with them for a few days until you solve this issue. She's definitely an abuser, and if she hasn't become physically abusive to you yet, she will. I mean, she's getting pretty close by now. So apart from that, what I'd do is I'd get as much proof of anything that I can that she is aggressive. Maybe the neighbors can help you out with what they heard and all that, and you need to report this. You also need to report that counselor and and you need to do something about your campus police. Maybe go to the real police if they're different or something like that. But yeah, they weren't there to help you and you were the victim. So they need to take a look at that. And for the breakup itself, I would say this is one of those moments that sending a text message saying we're done is good enough, I'd say. However, if for any reason you want to do it face to face, have somebody there with you in case things go sideways. And what do you guys think about this situation? What would you do if you were in OP shoes? Let me know in the comment section. And now let's move on to the community comments to see what they said. Botnan says, well, first off, you need to report that counselor because they're a tit who told someone in an abusive relationship that they just need to toughen up. For moving out or getting your stuff, have an escort and witness. You can ask the police or potentially the public safety department at your university or ask a friend or two to come with you. After that, try to limit contact with your girlfriend unless it's helpful. If she sends you a threatening text, save it, but don't respond to it. If at any point she is threatening you, file a report with your campus police, or perhaps this might be better, with the actual police department so there's a paper trail of her destructive behavior. The fact that you're a man and she's a woman does not excuse her awful behavior. 
Chicky Ticky 67 says, nope, 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 nope. Would the counselor be as flippant if she had said you were threatening her like that? Probably not. Drop her most Ricky tick and file a complaint against the counselor for not taking threat of bodily harm seriously. Recta says, please report the counselor and the campus police. They very clearly are not able to meet the needs of male victims of domestic violence. You are not the first man on your college campus to suffer from this and you won't be the last. Somebody, lots of somebodies, needs to get a talking to about this. The fact that the store has security footage is good. File a police report and inform your college that you've done so. This makes you look credible. Nobody can spin that video and if the police take you seriously, the Keystone cops on campus have to take you at least a little bit seriously as well. Whenever you file a complaint or request to formally move out of student housing, make it clear that you've been treated as though you were culpable in this situation when you are in fact a victim. Ask them what they're going to do to ensure your safety. They should have some fairly clear guidelines for what happens when two students are involved in a domestic violence situation. Your gender should not matter here, despite how you've been treated. As for who you report this to, you may have to go to multiple people. If your university has an ombudsman, that may be a starting point. This is a person who is there to help you mediate situations when you've already tried other avenues, which is what you've done by going to a counselor. If there is a women's center, I would also contact them. These are the people on campus that will be most familiar with dating violence. Contrary to the term women's center, they are usually pretty good about taking male victims seriously. It's not their main mission, but they know that people like you exist and they know what campus resources are available to you. I think between these groups, you should be able to figure out the procedure for filing a formal complaint about this incident, as well as how to best protect yourself on campus. Opie's edit. I'm at a hotel now. My dad gave me his credit card so I have a place to stay. To all the people who said it would escalate, that's exactly what happened. She has a night lab so I went home to get stuff and she came in early and just started right in with giving me crap so I just tried to leave and she grabbed me by my arm and slapped me on my face and back of the head really effing hard and then she started apologizing and making excuses and begging me not to go anywhere. I said I was going to get groceries and she said that couples should always shop for groceries together which I didn't know what to say to. So she came with me and we walked across the street and as soon as we walked into the store something set her off again and she just started pummeling me right in public. There was a security guard who pulled her off of me and called the police. They took forever to get there and she used this time to take off. The store says they have a fight on security video and cops asked me what I wanted to do. I said I wasn't sure, but I wanted an escort to get my valuables, books and ID out of the apartment and they agreed to come with me. She was not there, so I was able to get everything important and a friend gave me a ride to the hotel while I called my dad. I can stay with him, but I want a few days in a hotel where it'll be harder to find me. Plus, I can walk to campus while I get the car situation figured out. The cops are supposedly waiting for her, but today is a big bar night in our town, so they said likely officers will get called away. I blocked her on my phone and social media, so I have no idea if she's called or texted. I assume she's smart enough to figure out we aren't together with my stuff gone. Edit 2. Just a quick update. My girlfriend apparently is on her Facebook talking about how I abused her and that's why we broke up. And I guess she's gotten a ton of sympathy from her friends and family and even a very well-known blogger that she met last year. My dad is driving in today, three-ish hours away, should be here in an hour or so, and going to take me to a family law attorney and get advice on everything from restraining order, getting video from the store, filing charges, how to deal with the campus counselor, talking with police, etc. I had no idea that he and my mom didn't like my girlfriend so much and were actually scared for me, but he said he's willing to pay whatever it takes to keep me safe and secure my reputation from her. Seriously, thank you so much for all the help. I don't think I would have had the guts to leave during her lab last night unless I would have posted this. Something really bad happened in that she physically beat me twice, but I am going to turn that into something positive. Alright, well OP got some pretty awesome advice and we also got the context in which she became a physical abuser. So hopefully OP can set the record straight because he wasn't just emotionally and physically abused. She's also trying to wreck his life with that social media post. 
So now we're gonna move on with the update, but I have to remind you about my playlists. They're awesome. They all have stories with updates on them. So just check them out. Now let's move on to the update. So I went to my appointment with the family law attorney who really helped me out a lot. She was able to get the security footage from the grocery store to the police who had enough evidence to book and arraign my ex on assault and battery charges. It's currently in the hands of a junior district attorney to see how they are going to proceed. I have a victim's advocate working with me to keep me informed along the way. Also, a restraining order is in place. She is not allowed to contact me in any way or come near me. The security footage is really bad. It shows her beating the crap out of me and me trying to get away. I don't even remember the incident being as bad as it looked on the video. It totally shuts down her accusations of me abusing or hitting her. I haven't spoken to my ex even once. I assume the judge spoke to her at the arraignment because apparently, I'm to be 100% no contact with her, she took all the disparaging stuff about me off of her social media. I believe it's part of the restraining order that I'm not to be mentioned, tagged, etc. on social media. I don't believe she has retracted what she said and just rather deleted it. The attorney also helped me with breaking my lease with campus housing without losing any money. So I'm living at my friend's place, which is cool, but I now have to commute to school, which kind of kills my schedule, but I'm dealing. I can't add much detail on the campus counselor, but just say it's being dealt with by the appropriate people. Anyways, I just wanted to give an update because everyone is super cool and I don't think I would have had the guts to leave had I not made that original post. OP's edit. Sorry, quick edit because I feel bad for leaving something out. So I had interactions with two different police forces. The campus police who were terrible and didn't want to even let me talk during the big altercation where the neighbors reported us. They were terrible, but the city police have been awesome and supportive and listened to me and got the ball rolling on this. I just want people to realize that there were some great police in this, not just the bad ones I had my first interaction with. Well, OP, I'm going to count this as a positive update. Of course, I can't count it as a happy update because, well, you were in an abusive relationship and there's nothing happy about that. But the good thing is that you're safe now and you're sorting everything out. So good for you. Thank you so much for sharing, OP, and all the best in the future. Take care. Now, let's move on to the next story that, like I said in the beginning of the video, also has an update. This post is from the subreddit Am I the A-hole and it's by user AITA Dad Cousin. Am I the A-hole for refusing to kick my cousin out? I, 29, live with my pregnant fiance, Sarah, 27, and my cousin, Mira, 18. To make a long story short, I've basically raised Mira myself since she was 4 and I was 15. Her parents are extremely negligent and when I was 20, she ended up basically moving in with me. While she calls me by my name and calls me her cousin, for all intents and purposes, we have a father-daughter relationship. Mira is obviously important to me. She didn't get along with Sarah at first. I think she just hated sharing my attention. But I thought they'd got along well now. Sarah and I have discussed Mira and her situation. While I knew Sarah thought independence is better, I personally think it's better for her to stay here while she goes to university. A few days ago, Mira came up to me crying and apologizing. She basically said she was sorry for being a burden and hurting me, for not realizing how I felt and that she would move out and everything. I had no idea what was going on, and when I managed to calm her down, she basically told me that Sarah had talked to her. Apparently, she told her that she was old enough to move out and stop being a burden on me, and that she needs to stop taking advantage of my kindness. I got pretty pissed and reassured Mira that I love her and wouldn't kick her out or anything. I was furious and argued with Sarah about it. Apparently, she thinks I'm letting Mira take advantage of me, that she's old enough to be independent. She thinks it's such an issue that Mira has been referring to the baby as her little sister, that she's my cousin and I have an actual daughter coming, so I can't keep coddling her. Basically, she thinks I'm spoiling her with all this, which is ridiculous, that she did it this way because I left her no choice. The whole just a cousin has really pissed me off. Even if not by blood, she is my daughter. I raised her and love her. Sure, I spend a lot of time and money and whatnot on her, but I would do that for any child I had. Our argument went terribly. I don't understand how she can see Mira as some leech I need to stand up to and that she did what had to be done. Mira was really happy I didn't feel that way and obviously hates Sarah now. 
Sarah and most of my in-laws obviously say she's right and I need to have appropriate boundaries. Our friends mostly agree with Sarah. Even my best friend basically told me that Sarah was right when I vented. Apparently, I basically forgot my place and it's unhealthy. I really, really don't agree with them, but having so many disagree, especially my best friend, is giving me doubts. I want what's best for Mira and while I personally want her to stay, if it is actually unhealthy, maybe Sarah would be right. Sarah definitely went the wrong way, but maybe I was wrong to not take some of the worries seriously. Well OP, in my opinion, no, you're not the a-hole. And personally, I don't know if I can see Sarah's point of view. I mean, I believe she feels a little bit threatened by Mira or something, and considering she said that she's carrying your actual daughter, that gives me the impression of a little bit of resentment there. However, what she did is an a-hole move. And of course, all of the opinions that you get from in-laws and friends and all of that stuff, unless you have asked for their opinion, it doesn't really matter. It matters how you feel, how you're protecting Mira, and how you're dealing with your relationship with your fiancé. All of this to say, OP, in my opinion, no, you're not the a-hole. You need to talk to Sarah, she should apologize to Mira, and you guys should try to move on as one big family, because that's what you guys are. I mean, Mira's happy about the baby and she talks about it like it's her little sister, so that means that baby is just gonna have more people that are gonna love her. And what is your judgment in this situation? Let me know in the comment section, and now let's take a look at the community judgments to see what they said. Throw away in a lot of numbers says, not the a-hole. Mira is in university. It's great that you're willing to let her live at home so she can get an education and hopefully not graduate with an overwhelming pile of debt. As long as she's in school and working towards supporting herself, that's a young adult worth subsidizing. I find it odd that you know Sarah well enough to marry her but had no clue how she felt about Mira or that she would go behind your back that way. I hate to tell you, but you knocked up the wrong person. And OP responds, thanks, and I agree. It's definitely a lot better than moving out young like I had to. And I'm starting to feel that too. It's so shocking to me. I never expected her to do something like this. Dogs Reading Books says, not the a-hole. Sarah is trying to kick out someone who's like a daughter to you. Would she be happy if you kicked out yours and Sarah's kid once the kid turns 18? No, probably not. Have a serious talk with her. Go to couples therapy. If nothing else works, break up with her. Fight for custody. And OP responds, I agree. No way we'd do it when our baby grows up. It makes me furious. And yeah, I guess a talk is necessary. Not sure how it will go though, given she apparently feels this strongly. Camel of Hate says, not the a-hole, this might be a hill to die on. If Mira is working and studying, doing chores at home and saving for the future, it is definitely a good idea to give her a safe place at your home. Another thing that I don't think you realize is how Sarah went and lied to Mira behind your back to get a result she couldn't have gotten from you. This is a crappy tactic, a breach of trust and also foreshadowing for what will happen in your future. This is how she will act every time if she gets away with it now. Think about it, friend. Alright, well community says not the a-hole, I absolutely agree. So now let's move on to the update to see how this story ends. It's been a big month for us. It's not perfect, but we're all trying to work it out and three weeks ago we started therapy for me, Mira and Sarah. It's been helpful, but still early. My friends just don't see her as my daughter, which seems to be why they agreed with Sarah. While therapy may change our minds for now, Sarah and I agreed to forgive and work together, and Mira will likely stay. Sarah maintains her issue is independence, though the therapist has suggested her worries for the baby and resentment for Mira's original hate are influencing her behavior over it, as some people said. On that note, Mira isn't happy I'm trying to forgive her, but I've made it clear that she has to take it out with me, not Sarah. It's still awkward between them obviously, but I think Mira's excitement for the baby is winning because she's getting less aggressive about her hate. I think with some time she'll be able to accept Sarah's apology. Also, to make it final, I talked to Mira about adult adoption. She was really happy and jumped at the idea. While she won't call me dad, I think this will help solidify our relationship. The therapist likes the idea and I'm seeing a lawyer so we can file as soon as possible. Also, some clarification. 1. A few people said Mira may be manipulating me. Sarah never denied what she said. She defended it. 2. I have more than enough money to support Mira and the baby and save. Helping with expensive things meant her car, laptop, old phone, textbooks, etc. Being necessary and expensive, we agreed she would save half and I'd cover the rest. 3. 
After talking to my best friend Moore, his stance is my fiance is more important than a cousin. That I forgot Mira's just a cousin and will never be my kid. I fundamentally disagree. For I never explicitly called her my daughter because she didn't. However, I said I was raising and parenting her and we did Father's Day and everything father-daughter related. Planning a day for my little girl is pretty explicit. 5. A more detailed history. At 15, I was living with my aunt and uncle because my mother's partner refused to let kids in his apartment. I basically did all the parenting for Mira. I would feed her, bathe her, clothe her, comfort her, play with her, etc. At 20, she stayed with me for babysitting until they wanted her back. In practice, she stayed with me 5 or 6 days a week, then 6 or 7, then aside from special occasions. While her parents used to pay for major expenses, I did all the real parenting. 6. A lot of people find Mira's original treatment of Sarah a gotcha. It was literal years ago and not exactly unprecedented for bio kids. I actively put a stop to it and she would be punished when she was particularly bad. I thought their relationship was now good and so did Mira. She genuinely came to love her and saw her like an aunt. There was a whole issue over her being overexcited about the baby. There wasn't continued hostility. Alright OP, well I'm gonna count this as a positive update underway. Hopefully everything works out for the best for all of you. Thank you so much for sharing and take care in the future OP. And that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch it. Now, if you've gotten to this point in the video, I assume that you like these stories that I'm reading out. So here are a couple more that you might enjoy. And if you don't have any time to watch another story right now, save it for later. And also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button.